Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thanks for joining. There are just 21 days left before the next financial disaster will spill its toxic effects into the lives of many and the economy overall. The student debt crisis is coming. Let's look into some truly shocking insights on this today. Hi, I'm a former investment banker and Wall Street veteran with a wealth of experience to share with you. On this channel, I provide insights on investing, recent events, and geopolitics to assist you with escaping the madness that has now become our new reality. So with Biden's failed student loan forgiveness plan, the repayments for student loans will start on October 1st. Since the health crisis in 2020, the government managed to allow former students to postpone the repayment of their debt obligations until now. This because they knew that most will not be able to service their debt so it will end in a disaster. Not only are the degrees, mindsets, and worldviews that many people obtained at their universities pretty much worthless or even hindering to a self-sufficient life. Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students. But in a purposefully tanked economy with high interest rates and all kind of restrictions, as well as the threat of becoming redundant by artificial intelligence, it's very hard to have a decent paying job these days. And if you have one, then the skyrocketed prices for housing, food, and other essentials will do their best to consume every little penny of earnings that people may have received. It was not always like this. This here just as a quick reminder how things were in the past. This was wealth and a high quality of life. But all of this has gradually been destroyed by exponential new money creation, leading to a constant inflation and enabling the big and crony guys to gobble up and use more and more of the newly created money while the rest of the population got nothing and kept stuck with the constantly increasing prices, having to pay more and more taxes for an ever-growing big brother government starting to run their lives. But back to the student situation. So thanks to their degree choices and the takeover of low-wage BS jobs, most of the graduates have no chance to ever earn enough money to survive, not even speaking about servicing their debt. According to Credit Karma, most former students are already struggling to make ends meet even without having to pay back their student debt. So if they are now forced in October to resume their student loan repayments, they will have to cut down consumption below the bare essentials, or to default which triggers a chain reaction across other forms of debt they have like credit cards, auto loans or mortgages, basically cutting them off from consumption for a long time. The short party of excessive consumption, Airbnb travel and stock market YOLAs funded by stimulus money is over. Now everybody has to pay the price for all the money printing. And the defaulting graduates and young people will hit the economy very hard going forward. How hard you're asking? Well, let's look into the numbers. So we have this chart from Forbes, which nicely shows the dilemma. Those in the categories of deferment, forbearance, and default will be the ones that are causing troubles here. And if we sum those up, we have over 32 million graduates. So the vast majority of all students owning together a whopping $1.2 trillion in debt that they are struggling to repay. $1.2 trillion of debt. That is a mind boggling number. I don't even know what is worse the amount of the fact that nearly 8% of all students can't repay their student debt now. This clearly shows that the system is broken. And I don't want to blame it all on the students. There are surely a few among them who studied something useful. But this is completely out of control, and it is a great reflection of what is wrong in our society. So in order to get a high-paying job, you are forced to pay higher and higher costs for your university education which you have to have in order to get the job, but which does not teach you much useful knowledge. Transforming the most creative and enthusiastic type of people, those with fresh ideas and motivation into debt slaves who are forced into conformity and keeping their mouth shut. So not bringing in all the good things that a young generation could add to the world because they just can't afford to speak up and to risk their hardly achieved job. This just turns them all into order-following zombies. It is just such a crime. But hey, that's maybe the goal in all of this. Anyways, now with this high debt burden and exploding defaults, these people will not be able to consume or to innovate. They will be a lost generation as we have seen in other advanced economies that make little use of their youth like Japan. This combined with the toxic socialist mindset and cancel culture will lead on its own to decades of declines. Because with their world views, these people have become their own enemy, leading to a life of confusion, self-destruction and inability to fit in. The victimization and finger-pointing instead of taking the responsibility for their own lives is just super toxic for themselves and for society. But beside these devastating long-term effects, the October 1st starting date will mark the beginning of an accelerated economic decline. But it is still hard to predict when this will all crash the markets though, 
because there are different delinquency deadlines that they first have to miss, which reach up to a year. Also, initially, some may be able to switch over to an income-based payment plan. So if they only work the minimum wage, then their student loan repayments would be lower. Nevertheless, I don't really see how people can survive with a low-income job with these high living costs. So either way, something has to go, and that will impact the economy very negatively on top of all the other destructive forces that are going on. Nothing is worse than a mind-bended, confused and deadlocked young generation without a future. We are seeing this in many countries right now. China's youth unemployment is also exploding to the extent they have stopped reporting on it. It is just all such a disaster. Uh, keep them happy with drugs and computer games. Right, thanks Mr. Harari. I forgot about that one. Let's just hope that they will at least keep it with such questionable response to the problem and that this does not get turned into the Third World War or some other kind of mass extinction event instead. There might be more reasons why these climate communists call themselves Extinction Rebellion or the Last Generation. Need to keep this in mind. Truly crazy times we live in. Anyways, that's it for now. Hope this information was helpful to you. If so, or if you disagree, please share your views in the comments below. Hope to welcome you as a new subscriber. If you found this video insightful, please give it a like and share it. But thank you very much for watching and all the very best to you.